Hello, welcome to MBWK. This video is going to be on toolpaths. I'm going to be covering what toolpaths are and some practical use cases for toolpaths or layers in Lightburn. Starting with what is a toolpath tool layer, if you come down here to the bottom left hand side of your screen, you will find this multicolored bar and the two on the end here, these T1 and T2 layers or paths fundamentally do exactly the same as all of the other layers. So if I click on T1 here, we will be able to draw any shape you want, whether it's rectangular or square. We can write text, literally write text, draw any shape that you require. We can use the node edit tool if it is converted to a Path. we can use the node edit tool so we can do everything the same as the other layers we can even put a radius on a corner and join shapes together using the boolean tools so you might ask the question what is the point of using these toolpath layers instead of the others. So I never used the toolpath layers as they were intended to be used when I first started using Lightburn until I came a cropper with using a normal layer instead of a tool layer with six coasters that I was doing. So it took a few hours to do some detailed photo engraving on some coasters for a customer. And I used a normal layer to put a border around the outside just so I could center my coasters properly in the laser. It was there as a frame purpose only and because the images were all engraved first although I was keeping an eye on the machine I left it doing its thing came back to it at the end because the layer that I used as a frame at the end I didn't realize I didn't turn it off in the cuts and layers window and every single coaster that had just been engraved which took hours to do ended up having a line around the outside so i had to redo all of those six coasters and from then on i have always used the tool path now i am going to show a few different ways that you can use these tool layers instead of using normal layers and this is the biggest difference of what the layers and the tool paths are for Basically the toolpath, the T1 and T2 layers don't get output to your laser. The only thing that gets output to the laser is for framing. So if you're framing with a diode laser, the laser will turn on at a very low power so you can orient your workpiece on your laser bed. For a CO2, there's usually a laser that's mounted to the side or that faces through the lens, but it's not actually powering the CO2 laser on because you can't see it. But that is the only thing that will be output to the laser from a tool path. I'm going to show you a couple of ways how I implement the tool paths into my daily design work, starting with a couple of basics, framing and constraints. And then we're going to do something fun with image masking using text and shapes. So first of all, something very, very simple. I'm just going to show this now. So here what you can see on screen is I've got the dimensions of the pitch frame and I have drawn this rectangle out so I can frame the piece in the laser. So if I go across to the laser now, if I go to start, is it on screen? Yeah, if I go to start, because it's on a toolpath, you'll actually get this error come up on screen. If this was an ordinary layer, uh, that's a line, if you click start now, this would send it to the machine. And this is basically what happened with my coasters. And I ended up with a line around the outside. So using a toolpath, there's literally no mistakes that can happen. So again, if I press frame, you can see on screen that it's now doing a run around the outside. And that lets us know that our workpiece is centered ready for work to be sent to the laser. Now constraints, I'm going to use this as the example as well. By constraints, what I mean is, is that if we wanted to type some text in the top here, so for those of you that don't know, Fable is our nearly one year old now, Whip It. What I'm going to do is just align this vertically. And as you can see, if I wanted to engrave this on this picture frame, we can see that the text is overlapping our line. So what I mean by constraints is that you have 
some guidelines to where you can orientate your work within the parameters of your workpiece. And if you accidentally, again, press start, uh, this would engrave the text. And then if this was a different normal layer, it will be sent to your laser as well. Whereas when it's on a toolpath, it will literally just do the text. So constraints are handy so you can maximize the amount of real estate that you've got. So if you wanted to, you could literally have Fable's first adventure and make it as big as possible on that picture frame. But it also means that you know that you're not going to be out of bounds here as well. It's also handy because if you have a specific size material, say you wanted to cut out some bookmarks or some earrings, but the size of your material isn't the full size of your bed, what you can do is type in the measurements, say it's 200 wide by 350 high. That means that you can leave this guideline in your workspace and then drop and drag your bookmarks or relevant earrings or whatever into that workspace. And that way you're not guessing whether or not you have enough room. Like you're not gonna have half a thing over. So very, very basic, but I needed to include it because this is a bit of information I wish I had when I first started. So image masking is quite a fun one. So I'm going to use my uh, serving paddle, my serving board, uh, charcuterie board, whatever you want to call it, as the example for the image mask. So we have a specific shape that we want to make sure fits on this serving paddle. These are actually my second best seller in 2025 so far. So I will be doing a video on how to create templates because I actually use a router to cut these out afterwards. But I always use my laser engraver to cut my templates and I always get spares because uh, I don't know if you can see that. Mistakes happen. So I always have spares, but I'm going to use this one as a reference. There's a few cool things that you can do with image masks. So what I'm going to do is bring this paddle into the workspace. And what I want to do is with this toolpath is make a image mask with the picture I have available here. This is a curry with some naan breads and bits and pieces. To get this, what I did was clicked the outside profile come across to the offset, make sure that the offset direction is inward and I want these corners to be rounded, so a selected round, clicked OK. And here it has created an offset, but it has included the handle. Because I don't want the image to go up the handle, what I want to do is create this cutoff mark here. And all I did to do that was draw a rectangle, larger than the handle itself. And then I just moved it up to the point where I thought it looked the best. And then I select the rectangle I just drew and the offset I created earlier. And then whilst they're both highlighted, go to the union subtract tool. If it goes this way, just press control Z and then hit the Boolean subtract tool again, and then it will go the right way. Uh, that is how I got the framework to line up how I want it on the serving paddle. I will do a whole video on this very soon. And then that way I can line this up on the center and A, I'm constrained, but two, A, but two. And B, this gives me what I need to create an image mask. So here I'm just going to center both of these. Whilst they're both selected, I'm going to right click and go to apply mask. And what's happened is the toolpath has created basically like a, a window that you can see the image through. It is still there. So what we can do is resize this to get it to the proportion that you want. Whenever you've got it looking as you want it, what you can do is right click and then click on flatten image mask. And there we have a image which has been cut out to the shape that you wanted and to the size you wanted. So we can just put this and line that up with the other toolpath 
and we are ready to engrave. Another thing that we can do with the toolpath is to create do, 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 do. Fable's first adventure. I don't know how well it's going to come out on screen. It's got the light in the background and the computer screen reflecting off of it. But we've basically got the picture of Fable, which is on the screen that you can't see at the moment. Um, but we've used the text as an image mask. So the image is acting as a window again, where you can see the picture of our one year old uh, behind it. So exactly the same principle, but this time we're going to do it with text. Uh, I'm going to come back to F3. Uh, we're going to come back to an image here of our young lad. So just to showcase, you can actually uh, apply an image mask with a normal layer. But again, I don't advise using a normal layer to do it. Something strange might might happen, and it's just less risky if you do it with a toolpath. It is possible to do it with a normal layer, is what I'm uh, just clarifying. So what we're going to do is, with the text, Ideally, for the best results possible, you want to try and get this as close to one another as you can, because sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to see what's behind it. But the principle is going to be the same. Let's just center that. If you're doing any text or anything, you need to make sure that your text is grouped first. Center everything and then do the same thing. Right click on, uh, select both, right click, apply mask, and you've got a cool, cool picture behind. This works really, really well with um, like advertisements and bits and pieces. So if you do images and bits and pieces for a company, uh, if you haven't tried this before, I suggest you do a couple of prototypes and see if companies like this, because I know a couple of the companies that I used to work for really liked this effect. So I've just covered image masks, uh, constraints, and framing. That's going to do it for this video, but if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way, please take a second to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, and it helps me out a ton. Um, that's going to be it for now. Next video is more than likely going to be how to design the template for uh, the servant paddle or charcuterie board. I've got a couple of different sizes, so if you're interested in that, make sure you turn the bell notification on so you're notified when that video comes out. So thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video.